What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV here, back here for another episode of the Premier League's Perspective, doubled up with Predict the Prem this week as well, as we've got a whole host of Premier League fixtures over the weekend. But let's start off with this perspective, reviewing our predictions that we did make for the midweek mm. fixtures. Uh, let me remind you how the scoring works at the moment. It's 271 to Sim, 244 to me at the start of last game week. It's five points for a correct scoreline, three points for a correct result, and both teams to score one point for a correct result. And then the star man as well, which is two points for a goal, one point for an assist. And let's get straight into the first game, which was Newcastle against Everton, which finished 3-1 on the day you went 2-2 I went 2-1 to Everton mm. so we got that completely wrong uh, did you see any of this one yeah I was watching parts of it and um, it was very very funny because uh, the first two goals uh, Holgate assisted a Lascelles own goal and then yeah. Lascelles assisted a Holgate own goal yeah. <laughs> um, but Newcastle were well on top um, especially in the second half Everton really struggled to get into the game and um, Deli Ali came on in the first half because of an injury uh, for Damari Gray, I think. And yeah. um, he struggled very badly. He got robbed for the goal which put Newcastle in the lead. He got robbed in the middle of the park and um, Newcastle went on to win 3-1 and Trippier scored a really nice free kick. Yeah, so did, yeah. really good um, result for Newcastle. And Sam Exerman was brilliant and uh, fair play. Uh, they, they, go, they go forward the win. And yeah. Everton now, not far off the relegation zone. No, they're really not. I think they're only about uh, three... Three points or something yeah the but they do have a few games in hand on the on the guys below them but they are in a dangerous position they really are in a dangerous position and the Everton fans laying into Deli Alley uh, after the game on his debut um, but yeah I think you're absolutely right St Maximan was breathtaking mm. um, in this game he really was that one assist where he uh, took it past a few players got to the byline and put in a lovely cross uh, into the box I thought he was absolutely uh, brilliant uh, St Maximan uh, so that's that one mm. Newcastle won 3-1 uh, West Ham against Watford finished 1-0 to West Ham on the day you went for 1-1 I went for 2-0 to West Ham so I get three points on the board here but I didn't really see much of this one did you? Yeah I was watching it at the same time I had three games on at the same <laughs> time and um, so I was keeping an eye on everything and West Ham were not impressive they did get the goal um, for a lucky goal through Bowen deflection but where but he's Watford form, yeah he's on great form and he's um, playing really well in his last six games yeah, he's really coming up trumps for them. But um, they weren't that impressive, West Ham. Uh, Zuma obviously was getting booed every time he got the ball. Both uh, deservedly so. Um, should never have started that game. But um, apparently he's going to start on the weekend as well. That's what Moyes is saying. Um, but West Ham, um, they just scraped it. I think Watford were actually the better team and were unlucky not to get anything out of this game. Mm. But um, good win for West Ham because they needed it. Um, after some shoddy results. So 1-0 win, they just go over the line. Yeah. Um, all right, let's move on to the Burnley-Manchester United game. It finished 1-1. Both of us going for 1-0 to Manchester United. This is the game I did watch. And I thought that in the first half, I thought, man, you were actually all right and did look like the better side. But after the second half started, I thought Burnley were the better side. And Man United, they've got this kind of constant theme where they play well in the first half and completely drop off in the second half and I think this kind of followed that but the player that I was really impressed with was Weghorst uh, that kind of in, he was very central to the goal that Burnley scored in that second half what a touch uh, he showed and I thought when when they signed him I thought how the hell did Burnley get him and I was really impressed with him uh, on the midweek yeah great great assist as well for the goal didn't he um, I thought he played really well but United will count themselves unlucky they went three and up at half time yeah definitely um, I think especially the second goal that was ruled out was a pretty pathetic decision definitely should have been allowed the first one understandable but still if that goes against you you're fuming um, so um, and they did take the lead through Pogba but uh, they'll be annoyed, as you say, second half Burnley came up trumps and got a very good draw, but still, draws are no good to Burnley right now, they need wins for, mm. for their position. Yeah, definitely, and Manchester United, um, you know, you say they were kind of unlucky uh, not to go free and up, and you're right, but I felt like they used up all their luck last year with the referees, were getting penalties every single game, <laughs> so, um, you know, karma, karma. You win some, you lose some. But anyway, let's move on to the Wednesday game, starting with Manchester City against Brentford. Finished 2-0 to Manchester City. You went 3-0, I went 4-0. So we both get three points in this one. Mm. Um, and yeah, just another routine win for Man City, really. Yeah, this one I didn't see much of. Um, we were at the Spurs, I was at the Spurs game. But 
a very good win for City and um, they now 12 I think well they were 12, no, 9 points clear because of Liverpool's win but they do go 12 points clear with that and they're just a non the winning machine at the moment and um, don't look, look like they're going to be stopped yeah uh, the steam train rolls on for Manchester City. Um, Norwich against Crystal Palace finished 1 1. You went 2 1 to Palace. I went 1 1. So I get five points in this one and you get zero points. Uh, I didn't see it because obviously Spurs were on at the same time. Um, but yeah, any comments? Yeah, Zaha. What a uh, goal that was. Unbelievable goal. And then he missed a penalty. I don't yeah. know if you saw that penalty, <laughs> one of the worst penalty misses I've ever seen. Yeah. No one near the target. And he put it so far wide, just skewed it. And that would have given me five points. But Did he slip or something as he was taking Kind it? of. He half he didn't kind of slip over, but I don't know. He kind of must have jarred his foot or something. But that obviously cost him the win. Um, but at least um, from the highlights I saw, still playing really well. Got an assist as well. So he looks like a real player. But decent point for Norwich. But again... Um, will it be enough for them in these kind of results? They kind of, in these kind of games, they need three points. They're on good form, Norwich. They're, They're playing all right. Form, yeah. Uh, Dean Smith has seemed to have turned it around. It, uh, but is it going to be enough to keep them up? Uh, remains to be seen. We'll see what happens. But there's still a long way to go. Uh, a lot of twists and turns in that relegation battle, that's for sure. Um, Tottenham against Southampton finished 3 2 to Southampton. Mm. Both of us going for convincing Tottenham wins. Uh, wasn't to be. Uh, I think we've mm. kind of reviewed this game in at length just. The only thing to say is that yeah. we just weren't good enough. Southampton deserved the win. That was it. Yeah, we lost 3-2, what can we say? Yeah, um, so zero points for us there. Next one is Villa against Leeds in an amazing game. 3 all. it finished. Both of us going for 2-1 to Aston Villa. Uh, Jacob Ramsey, uh, two goals. Coutinho, a goal and an assist. Mm. Um, but Leeds uh, keep plug kept plugging away and it finished 3 all. Yeah, they came back from 3-1 down to get the result. And Dan James as well getting a brace. Fair play to him. But Ramsey's a player who's not, not talked about enough. He's really starting to score goals on a regular basis. A young player for Villa as well. Starting to score some really nice goals. And, and the position he is, attacking midfield, he's got a bit of pace about him. He's got a decent finish. Maybe he's one to watch. But obviously Coutinho, great start to, lo great start to life at Villa. He's been really good. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And, in, and when you're looking at Jacob Ramsey, uh, surely he's got to be in with a shout for the England, uh, an England call-up pretty soon. The way he's going, yeah, potentially. I think the World Cup might be a bit too soon, but... He's playing very well. I think he might get a call up before the World Cup. But I just yeah, potentially. Potentially, he's playing very well at the moment. Mm. Um, all right, so none of us get any points on that one. Liverpool, Leicester from last night finished 2 0 to Liverpool. Mm. We both went for 3 1. Um, I was like skipping in between both games, and I got to say, Luis Diaz, man, absolutely brilliant performance. Diego Jota uh, getting on the score sheet again uh, twice last night with some good finishes. And uh, Mo Salah back in the team as well. So Liverpool are back at it once again. Yeah, didn't hurt them at all, did it? When was Salah and Mane. Well, they hardly had a league game while, while when they were out. But honest. every game they won, pretty much. Even the Carabao Cup, they got through to the final. So Diaz, yeah, as you said, had a great debut, um, Premier League debut, played really, really well. And... Um, uh, Jota has really stepped up for him, hasn't he? Mm. That brace. I think he's second in the pr player. Premier League behind Masala yeah. for goals. You know who's third? Son. Exactly. Yeah, but, but Jota, man, yeah. unbelievable. Unbelievable signing he's been and he's turning into um, a world-class player at the Definitely. moment. Definitely. And I was actually quite surprised when I looked at the scoring charts last night and I saw Son at third. I didn't realise yeah. he was third top goal scorer. Mm. Uh, level with Jamie Vardy with nine goals. Uh, but anyway, the last game of the weekend was Wolves against Arsenal. Finished 1-0 to Arsenal. Both of us going for 1-0 to Wolves with a few talking points in this game. Um, obviously, the main one being the sending off to Martinelli. Um, Arsenal fans up in arms about it. Um, what did you make out of it? I think by the letter of the law, it was a yellow. It was a fair decision from the ref. Um, I think if I was a, if it was a Tottenham player, I'd be fuming. And Arsenal fans, um, I understand why they're angry. But at the end of the day, the first yellow was so stupid. He pushed the throw and taker off the ball. So that's a clear yellow as card he's it. as he's throwing it. So that's like a yet. You have to give a yellow for that. But the guy plays advantage, and he but and then it's Wolves on the attack, and he barges him in the back like another clear yellow card. So. I mean, if it wasn't two such clear yellows, then I could understand, but they were two. Like, what's he going to do? Just not book him because because he wasn't booked. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If he's going to do, do two bookable offences, then that's it. Yeah. So I think uh, Martinelli only has himself to blame, I think. Are people making excuses? Oh, he didn't know he was on a yellow. But well, I'm, I'm sorry. He did two bookable offences. It's two yellows. So that's it. Yeah, I agree with that uh, wholeheartedly. Uh, so that is that. Let's go over to star man. We both picked Harry Kane and obviously he did nothing um, in terms of goal of assist against Southampton. So uh, that's that for uh, the perspective. 
It's finished on 275 to 256. So I gained a couple of points, I think eight points on you this week. But let's get into our predictions for the weekend. And let's start off with a Manchester United against Southampton. And surprise, surprise, we've oh, look gone at for that. the exact same score once again, 2-1 to Man United. Yeah, I think, I think it'll be one of those games where United, you'll be like, how the hell do they win this game? But they'll win it. They'll just find a way, I've got a feeling. Because you even saw against us, Southampton, as much as they played well, they're always going to leave chances at the back. And they did against us. Um, we didn't paint full advantage of it. And with the quality United have, I reckon they'll get a couple of goals. And um, I know they were very attacking, got a lot of chances against us, but I don't think they'll get as many chances against United. They will get chances, but they'll only get the one goal, I reckon. And um, they might go leave it frustrated. So I'm going with a 2-1 win for United. Yeah, I think um, it's going to be an interesting game for sure. I mean, Man United, the way they've been uh, of late, uh, especially under Ragnik, is they've had a really good first half and uh, been a poor second half team. Southampton, apart from the Spurs game, they've been a really good half first half team again. And they've also been a poor second half team. So it's going to be interesting to see the way this game pans out. Uh, but I do think Man United will just nick it. Um, it'll be a good game of football though, in my opinion. Uh, but the next game we're going to talk about is Brentford against Crystal Palace. I've gone for 1-1. Yeah, I won for 2-1 to Palace. So I know Brentford have a good home form, or not well, not good home form, but they're always a tough team to play against when they're um, at home. But I think um, with Zaha, I know he's missed a penalty, but he got a good goal, um, and Adel Lise is playing well. And I know they need Drew to Norwich, but I'm back in to win this game 2-1. Yeah, I mean, Brentford, uh, they're going through a sticky patch at the moment. Uh, not winning many games. I can't really see them winning this one, but I can see them having enough for a point. Palace as well, I mean, they've got... They're playing well sometimes. You don't really know which Palace are going to turn up, but they've got some really good individual talent in the team, that's for sure, with Elise, Conor Gallagher, uh, Wilfred Zaha as well. So um, I don't know if they've got enough to win. I mean, they do have enough to win, but I don't know if they will have enough mm. on the day to win because I think Brentford will, will uh, provide a stern test for them. So I couldn't really pick a winner. So I've gone for 1-1. Next game is... Everton against Leeds and we've both gone for the same score again 2-2 two, two. oh wow look at that yeah so I think Lampard's first home game in the Premier League I think he won 4-1 against Brentford in the FA Cup um, obviously bad result against Newcastle but Leeds I think both teams actually are going to be very attacking I think Everton know they need wins I think they know that uh, and Lampard's a very I think he's a bit of an attacking manager he's going to be on the front foot so I can see him being very open but their defence is not great M Mina's out for 10 weeks now mm -hmm. and they don't have many other good defenders and Leeds are in good form and they're looking like um, playing well at the moment scoring goals so 2-2 two, two, I've gone for. Yeah, um, I think it's going to be two attacking sides going up against each other. Leeds have turned it around of late. Everton with a new manager, so you never know um, how Everton are going to perform. But it's going to be a good another one. I think it's going to be a good game of football packed with loads of goals. So uh, we've both gone for two all in that one. Uh, Watford against Brighton. I've gone for 1-0 to Brighton. I've gone 1-1. One, one. Uh, Roy, I've gone for Roy Hodgson um, to get a point. Um, I think it's his first home game as Watford manager, if I think right. Because he played away at Burnley and away at um, West Ham. Mm. So um, Brighton are obviously a tough team, but I think Hodgson has got um, Wat Watford in his first two games a bit more harder to beat and a bit more harder to play against. So I've gone for a close game, 1-1. One, one. Yeah, I mean, Watford have struggled for goals under Roy Hodgson so far. Um, have they scored a goal uh, under Roy? I think they drew 0-0 and lost 1-0, didn't they? Correct. So, um, haven't scored a goal yet. Um, for, uh, Roy hasn't got his team to score a goal yet. I think Brighton uh, will provide a stern test. They're solid at the back, Brighton, and I think they can definitely nick a goal here. So, I've gone for 1-0 to Brighton. Um, next one is Norwich against Man City. Interesting. We've both gone for Man City to score a goal, score three goals, but you've gone for clean sheet and I've gone for one goal for Norwich. Yeah, I just think Man City are too good for Norwich to score. That's just how I feel. And um, uh, even though Norwich are in decent form, I can't see them scoring against City. Mm, I mean, I've kind of picked the opposite to that. I think Man City will be uh, too good for Norwich, but I think Norwich can get a goal here. And... They've been on good form of late. Like I said before, Dean Smith have kind of turned it around. So I think they're good for a goal, but I still think they'll get battered. So 3-1 to Man City. Next up on the Sunday is Burnley against Liverpool. I've gone for 3-0 to Liverpool. Yeah, I've gone 1-0. I feel like uh, Burnley at the moment are keeping it very tight. They're, making, they're having a lot of um, very tight games. And um, they're going to make it very difficult to, uh, for Liverpool to break them down. But I think Liverpool will eventually have the pressure tell. And I got I went for only went for one nil. 
Yeah, I've gone for 3-0. I think it'll be a convincing win, to be honest. Um, yeah, you're right in what you say about Burnley, but when you come up against a team like Liverpool, Man City, I think um, there's a potential there for the floodgates to open. Luis Diaz playing really well. Uh, Mo Salah back in the side now, and Jota as well on firing form. So I, I really can't see anything above a uh, Liverpool battering here, to be honest. Um, Newcastle against Aston Villa. I've gone for 1-1. One, one. Mm, I went 2-1 Villa. Why have you gone... I've gone for 1-1 one, one because I think Newcastle under Eddie Howe, um, a slight uptick in form. They obviously beat Everton quite convincingly last week with St. Maximan playing really well. Aston Villa on the flip side as well um, in their uptick of form since Steven Gerrard has uh, come to the club and they've got their own performers that are playing really well. Coutinho pulling up trumps for them. Jacob Ramsey, a few other uh, January signings as well that has come in and done well for them. So I think it will be an interesting game of football, but I think Newcastle at home with the crowd behind them will have enough to get a draw here. Yeah, they got a very good win obviously against Everton. I just feel like Villa are a lot more defensively solid than Everton. And I think with Ramsey, Coutinho, uh, Watkins, um, they're playing well and, and at the moment. I feel like they're going to get goals and I feel like they'll have enough to um, keep Newcastle at bay without a goal, with only one goal. So that's why I've gone 2-1 Villa. All right. Uh, Spurs against Wolves. Wow, you changed your prediction, did you? I changed it. 2-0, <laughs> one a bit different. Um, yeah, just I'm hoping we'll get another goal. I think it's going to be a really tight game. I think it could be one goal in it, but I'm hoping that if we get a goal, um, Wolves will have to open up a bit and then we can exploit them. So I'm, going, I'm just going to go for 2-0. I'm going to go for 1-0. Um, I, I do think the game's going to be decided by the odd goal. It could very well be 1-0 to Wolves. It could be very well 1-0 to Spurs. But again, it could be very well be 0-0 as well. Um, I think Spurs have been frail at the back, but Wolves obviously um, haven't scored that many goals this season. Only two teams have scored less than them this season. That's Burnley and Norwich. So um, it's not going to be the best game of football, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, I've just gone for 1-0 to Spurs here. Hopefully we can get back to winning ways. Next up, and last but not least is Leicester against West Ham. And I've gone 1-1. One, 1-1. One. One, one. I've gone 3-2 to West Ham. I think this game is definitely going to throw up goals. I mean, every Leicester game as of late has been doing that. Um, they're definitely good for a goal, but they're obviously good for conceding goals as well. They've been terrible at the back this season. And West Ham as well. You don't really know which West Ham tie they're going to turn up. Um, I think if Kurt Zuma does start, the Leicester fans will definitely be on his back. Could cause for a uh, raucous atmosphere. But I think West Ham might do just enough to get over the line against the Leicester side, which are just floundering at the moment. So West Ham as well, not on the best of form, to be honest. But I think it'll be a good ding-dong battle, but West Ham will just get over the line. Yeah, um, I think that... Um Leicester actually put in a pretty decent um, individual display, uh, a defensive display, sorry, against uh, Liverpool um, the other night. I actually thought it was 2-0, but um, I think they were quite solid for most of the game, and, and that impressed me a bit. But against who? Against Liverpool, oh. even though they lost 2-0. And um, even though they're... Um, they're not in great form. They obviously lost to us as well. Um, they have got battered in the FA Cup. I feel like they're going to have a bit of reaction in this game. West Ham didn't impress me against Watford. So I think they might struggle to win this game. So I've got, that's why I'm going for 1-1. One, one. All right. And then move over to the star man. And we've both gone for that man. Um, I didn't go for Salah. Oh. Which is weird. Yeah, I went for Mares. Oh, you've gone for Mares. I've gone for Mo Salah, uh, which is an interesting one. But uh, yeah, why, why Riyad Mares? Norwich away, he's in good form. Um, he's been taking their penalties. If he starts, I think um, he'll get probably get a goal or two. That's mm -hmm. why I feel Mahrez. Risking the pep roulette. Yeah, I'm risking it, but I'm going for it. All right. High risk, high reward. <laughs> Last time you went for pep roulette, I think you went for Foden and you didn't play, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. So let's see what happens there. But yeah, I've gone for Mo Salah. I don't think it needs much, ex much explanation. Uh, best player on the planet right now and uh, back from the AFCON uh, to prove a point after losing in the final. Uh, so I've gone for Mo Salah. I think he'll get back on the score sheet, that's for sure. So Sim's gone for Mares. Uh, I've gone for Salah. That is our star men. I want to know what your predictions are for this weekend. I want to know who your star man is and I want to know who you think is going to come on top between me and Simeon this week. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Like subscribe and comment and as always come on you spurs, spurs.